Welcome to the Reclaimed Heirloom. My name is Christina, and I want to show you how I transformed this dresser. I will walk you through all the details and the supplies in which I used. Starting with a custom mix of the Annie Salone chalk paint, I used Obis and Blue and Olive. Starting off with my tabletop, I'm using a Minwax gel stain. And this stain is so easy to apply. It's super thick and with a disposable sponge applicator, I'm literally just doing back and forth strokes, nice long even strokes as I'm finishing and it leaves a beautiful finish. The beautiful part with this gel stain is you technically really only need one application on a raw wood surface. Using an artist's brush, I decided to go around and paint in all my frames on the interior as well. And then I can move out to the exterior with my custom color mix of that Opus and Blue and Olive color. And I want to get a nice thick um, application on here with the chalk paint. No specific brush stroke, just getting the paint on. And now I'm actually adding in a little bit of a Versailles color, which is a very creamy, slightly green color and I just want to blend it in randomly. I'm not doing it for a perfect blend, I'm just wanting to make some highlights. So I'm starting out with some clear glaze, and this is acrylic base, but you can use water base too. I'm also going to add a couple of drops of some extender, so I have plenty of working time. I want to create some foundation texture, and I'm actually going to use tissue paper this time as well as I'm going to use more of the Obis and Blue, and I'm also going to be using more of the Olive. And here are some chippy brushes I'm going to use and some Burnt Umber. And again, this is a water plate based glaze, but I am gonna mix it with the acrylic and it should be okay. Very important that each step is completely dry. So I'm just using a hot gun there to dry everything that I need. So I'm starting out with my clear glaze and I just want a nice application and I'm ready to go. I don't need to use any water, just this clear glaze. And you can use water base or acrylic base. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding a little bit of that blue chalk paint and dipping it into water to dilute it. And now I'm just gonna put it in random, no specific design here, just in random. I'm adding a little bit of that burnt umber, which is a red brown glaze. And then I'm just gonna crumple up all of this tissue paper and it's gonna give me some really, really nice, fine, fine texture. And that's how I wanna start my base of this project. The technique I'm actually using is what they term frottage or frottage. And really all you're doing is you're creating these random textures just with crinkled paper. And I'm really, really enjoying using the tissue paper as it sticks and crimples so nicely and it's so refined. So it's really making everything feel kind of crackly when I lift off that tissue paper. So again, using those three original clean brushes I had, I'm adding that burnt umber, I'm adding in the uh, blue, as well as a little bit of that olive, and I'm doing this frottage technique just to give my foundation a start. And I'm really loving that detail that this tissue paper gives. What I'm wanting to create is kind of this old, primitive, aged patina, this decorative style finish. And again, just starting with my foundation, I'm just creating this random texture and throwing in the colors very sporadically. So important rule is putting your clear glaze down first. For any reason, you went ahead and you've added your colors, you've added in this frottage or frottage uh, paper crinkle effect, and you don't like anything, no problem. Grab that clear glaze, wipe it back, and start over again. I love working with clear glaze. I feel it really allows me a lot more freedom and control to what I'm wanting to create. As well, I can correct anything that I need to as I'm going along through my project. 
Let's take a look at this as a first base, and I'm kind of liking where this is going. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually just going to use all that leftover tissue paper I originally had that I've used for that uh, frottage. And now that everything is completely dry, I'm actually going back and repeating the step, but instead of actually displacing the entire sheet of uh, tissue paper, I'm just going to be a little bit more methodical and go around with the tissue paper I have left over, and I'm just going to be particular on how I want my textures to be bigger and smaller. So I'm going around with my three colors after I have placed my clear glaze down, and I'm just going to dab it, and I'm going to move that paper around and I'm going to make larger and smaller areas and just make this random texture and really bring this design together. I do find that using this tissue paper is allowing me a really nice almost crackled effect. So when I want it to be really small I use the very uh, base of my fingertip and I dab in there with more detail and when I want it to be a larger portion I move the tissue paper around for the different crinkle effect it's going to give and use a larger portion of that. Anything that ages over time never does it in a straight line. It's always very sporadic and it's very irregular. So where I'm trying to evolve with this is by adding a few different techniques, it's going to give it that aged and old world uh, patina effect by having these different variations of textures. So the clear glaze does not seal chalk paint. It's just a decorative medium. Think of the glaze as it's acting as if I wanted to use water in order to play around with my paints, but it's actually a volume, it's a, it's a medium. And it's think of it almost like clear paint. It's paint with no pigment, so it's allowing me this movement with the colors I choose and that playtime. But remember, as you're going along and there's something that's gone on, you don't like that, just grab your clear glaze and it will wipe out what you've already done. Which is fantastic because if for any reason you want to change around your color design, you can definitely do that by adding the clear glaze again and starting over. As I've carried out with this design, I'm using that burnt umber as more of that rustic and kind of a decrepit kind of look and just sticking to my edges and corners so it's kind of mimicking as my my dark wax versus using a dark wax for this project now you could use a rag to do this but what I'm finding by using the tissue papers I'm not really wanting to absorb the amount of paint that I've put on um, what I wanted to do is I really wanted to create the textures and I'm finding that the tissue paper is working exactly how I had hoped it would. I got the idea from a decorative artist doing it on walls and I had tried with saran wrap and it was okay but I'm definitely really loving how defined the um, detail is coming with the tissue paper. Playing around with the different techniques has really give it this organic feel and I'm really pleased with the aged look it has. It really demonstrates there's been a history and you've created this really nostalgic old world um, character using those different techniques. I'm going to continue on and I'm going to put some added fun characters and let's see what I do. So lacquer or clear wax will seal your stained and raw wood projects as well. It's actually really good for it and protects it. So with a disposable sponge applicator, I'm just going to make long, even strokes and I'm going to put this lacquer on and we're good to go. I'm going to actually show you how you can varnish to seal your chalk paint projects. Super easy, very durable. I'm actually going to be putting a couple of coats. The important thing is if you're going to use any decorative waxes, clear wax or varnish first. With any kind of lacquer, application can be done with a nice smooth synthetic brush. It can be done with one of those spongy applicators you saw me use it with, as well as you can even use a roller. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna finish up some of the other fine details of what I wanna do to this piece. We're going to do a lacquer finish this time and I'm gonna show you step by step how I did it and what I used. So let's get busy. 
So for this next step, I'm going to use some Primer Red, some yellow Arles here, and some Versailles, which is part of the base color. And I'm just going to go ahead and throw some fly specks on here of these different color paints. And this is a total option. I just love the character it gives. So with a toothbrush, but you can use an artist brush as well, I literally dip some paint into some water and then I dab it dry a little bit onto a piece of paper towel. And then I just flick some random colors and add some highlights and lowlights with the colors I choose. The one thing to remember when you're going to do any of this spackling slash fly spec that I found the best um, when I first started doing it is never to use a straight paint on a artist brush or toothbrush, whatever you're going to use as a means of just throwing the, the paint spackles. And the reason I'm saying that is because I, when I first started, when I first did it a few times, it kind of glooped a little and I didn't like it. So in order to maintain a certain level of control, so if I don't like it, by dipping it in the water and diluting the paint, this allowed me to go back with my fingertip and a little towel. The paper towel would be wet. I was able to basically erase some of where that spackling went wrong. So we're going to seal this with some varnish and I'm going to show you another aged effect. If anybody is interested in having longer, more in-depth tutorials, let me know in the description box below. Really zero in on some of the troubleshooting and technical supports. What I would like to do is kind of be able to not edit short videos like I do with the YouTube platform. If it is something that you feel would be a huge benefit, please, again, let me know in the description box below. To remove the practice paint jobs I originally had on this uh, little dresser, this hand sander, this Bosch hand sander is absolutely perfect. Especially when you have small or tiny hands, it is so easy to use and it holds all in the dust in this little compartment and absolutely love it. Fusion Mineral Paint is a fantastic paint, interior or exterior. All-in-one finish, beautiful colors, perfect for the inside of drawers. But for this piece, I'm probably going to stain the inside of the drawers because they're really good condition and it's just to freshen them up. If you do use a paint, it's always nice to use a nice complementary color. So I'm going to go ahead and put on this clear matte lacquer, which is a matte finish. There is also a sheen finish if you prefer to have a light sheen on it. And just like the tabletop, it's so easy and you can use a synthetic brush, you can use the rollers. I'm just using a disposable applicator sponge here and I'm going to apply probably about three coats only because I'd like to have a little bit of density um, built on here and I'm going to show you exactly why. So similar to the clear wax, what you want to do with the lacquer is basically seal the entire painted uh, piece wherever it, it has been painted. And it does have a very durable protection coat to it. It's a little less vigorating than having to apply the uh, clear wax just because you do have to use a little bit of elbow grease with the clear wax. Whereas this is just basically like painting on a clear paint, but it is sealing your chalk paint projects. So again, I'm going to go ahead and finish this off and I'm going to put on a few coats. It dries very, very quickly. Once all my lacquer applications have been completely dry, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add some white wax. And I'm just going to do a slight patina aged effect with the white wax instead. And I'm using this little uh, brush that I use only for white wax. And I'm going to go around and I'm just going to put in highlights in some random areas around edges, corners, and the hardware. And yeah, it has such a beautiful effect. And with all the texture that we originally have on this piece, it sinks in really nice, giving it those little highlights. And it just has this nice dusted um, aged effect with it. So this is another great way of doing it rather than always feeling like you need to turn to dark wax when you want to actually add some highlights highlights but still give an aged effect.
When working with any of the decorative wax uh, tones, you can start with a little bit and build your way up. And I did decide to go around the very edges of the wood finish top and just give it a little bit of a dust highlight with the white wax as well. And yeah, I'm absolutely loving the effects of white wax. And I'm actually surprised I don't use it more than I do. It really gives a nice, true, aged kind of almost highlighted from the sun over time, it makes the paint kind of look a little bit worn. If you've added a little too much, you can always just grab a clean, lint-free cloth and give it a wipe and it should buff right off. But once completely dry, you're good to go. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment in the comment box below, as well as let me know if you're interested in having one-on-one -on -one tutorials that are going to be very in-depth, very instructional on very precise decorative finishings to help troubleshoot and get you those finishes you're looking for. So again, leave me a comment in the comment box below, as well as don't forget to give me a thumbs up for this video and we're gonna see you soon. We have a chalk paint duvet cover, which I actually already did, but I lost some of my footage. So I wanna provide you a good video. So I've gone ahead and done some reordering. I'm gonna redo the whole thing and we're gonna get that out to you really soon. As well as salt wash. I've got some salt wash that I'm dying to play with and I'm gonna share the entire experience with you and we're gonna see you soon. Bye-bye.